If we're teaching or learning about science, technology, engineering, and math, STEM subject areas, one of the things that we can use in order to better understand the environments is to use models. So for example, let's say I'm doing a section on the ecosystem of the Pacific Northwest, the oceans, and I want to talk about the Great Pacific Octopus. I could have a little model of the Great Pacific Octopus. I could talk about the features. I can rotate it in space. Um, and that's great. That's a great way to engage the students. If I'm talking about the biology of the brain, I can look at the brain. I can look at the sections of the brain and such. Unfortunately, these physical models are limited. First of all, I'm going to have to be in the same physical space as the model in order to use it, or I'm going to have to have some sort of webcam hooked up and, and share that remotely. I'm going to have to provide sort of one experience for all of my students, rather than have my students interact individually with the model to learn at their own pace and to understand the concepts and reinforce the concepts that they need to learn. Now, fortunately, there are some companies out there that are creating content in order to help us have those 3D models. And one of the companies that I really like is called InSpirit VR. Today, we're going to take a look at what they offer, not just in terms of 3D models, not just in terms of simulations, but also curriculums that they've built for us so that we have full lesson plans that are developed. In fact, my son is taking a course in biology and he had a section on the heart. And surprise, surprise, In Spirit VR had a complete lesson plan around the heart that he used in order to reinforce his knowledge. And he said it as a student, it was fantastic. He was sharing it with all of his fellow students at the school that he goes to, and it's kind of a big hit. So not only are we going to look at the InSpirit VR website and some of the things that they offer, which I think you're going to be interested in, but in this video we have a special surprise. We're going to interview the CEO of InSpirit VR and talk a little bit about what their missions are, what they're hoping to accomplish with the website, how they're expanding it into the metaverse, and some of the, some of the cool plans that they have for the company and some of the neat things that they're doing. So we're going to start by taking a look at what they have right now, and then we're going to talk with the CEO about why they have that and where their future plans are for their products. I think you're going to find this to be an interesting tool, and I think it's something that you're going to be using in your classrooms and your own learning quite a lot. Let's start by going to InSpiritVR.com. That's the website for InSpirit. And you'll notice on my landing page, I'm already starting to get some great information. So for example, you can see that there's an alignment with a number of educational standards that are out there. You can see that at the very top are, are what I really like about this website. I can have a learner-focused experience. I can find specific resources to support my own curriculum. I can find 3D lesson plans. So I can utilize those in my classroom and I can find simulations. If I go in as a learner, this is great. So for example, I talked about my son needing to do some extra work on the heart. Wanted to learn a little bit more about the heart, wanted to reinforce what he was learning in biology around the heart. So he could go in and he could look at different subject areas. He can connect with other students. He can join their Discord server. So there's quite a lot here for the learner. And that is, is expanding as we see in Spirit seems to be adding more all the time. I can go in as an instructor and find resources. Here you can see that I can go by subject area. I can find things such as a cheat sheet on a specific subject. I can find a lesson plan, 3D models, there's a lot here. So I can go here and for example with this particular, this is an interactive model, I can zoom in on it. So I can zoom in, I can click on an object in there, gives me information on it, I can rotate it in that 3D space, I can interact with it. There's a number of different uh, subject areas that there's content for. You can see that there's, you know, some suggested content on the side as well. If I go back to the main page again, this is a handy thing that I can use, 3D lesson plans. So a lot of times if I have a student that needs a little bit of extra help, this might be something that I can provide for them to help them interact with the subject a little bit more and to understand it better. Or maybe I have a student that wants to get ahead. Maybe I have a student that wants to learn more than we're currently teaching in the class. Or maybe I make this part of my class. The point here being is, I don't have to teach to the middle. I can also teach to the edges because I'm resourced. I have something I can use in order to do that teaching without having to go through a whole bunch of effort in order to create a lesson plan, let alone the 3D models, which unless you've got significant training are going to be difficult to do. 
Here's the one on the heart that I was talking about. So this is the one that my son was using. You can see that we have a study guide on the heart. Let's go have a look at it. And you can see that with this uh, simulation, I have a testing segment. So I have reinforced learning. So I can test myself as I go through. There's a nice introduction. It talks about the heart, talks about the role of the heart in biology and such. And then it loads a 3D model of the heart. Now I can rotate this model so I can look at it by grabbing my mouse. I grab my mouse and move it around. I can zoom in and zoom out. I can rotate it in space. I can look at different aspects of the heart and such. One of the things that I really like about this particular one is that I'm then provided with a diagram that's labeled. And then I'm provided even with another 3D model, which is that more traditional science model that you might see in a science classroom. I know that we had a lot of these in, in the science classrooms when I was younger. We had a lot of plastic models that were built around the heart, the brain, uh, intestines and such. And a lot of these models, you could take the pieces apart and you could reassemble them. And we would always have pieces that went missing. Here we don't have to have that because we can actually zoom in and we can really uh, you know, dial in and, and go directly into specific areas that might be of interest to us. We can then even have labels here that will discuss the different things that we're looking at. And then you can see it's a very nicely structured uh, lesson plan on the heart. And what I really like, if I scroll down to the very, very bottom, they also provide a lot of source material here as well. So I can expand upon this lesson plan if I want to do like a whole section on the heart or if I want to go a little bit deeper. Plus there's some nice testing uh, elements in there as well. So I think that's a great lesson plan. Whoa, zooming right into the heart. And actually you can see here, it, as I zoomed in, I, I, it actually changed the level of detail. So as I come further into the heart, you can actually see it's quite a detailed uh, model that I can go in and, and work with. So it's very, very useful for students and for instructors. Now, that's not all that they have here. They also have simulations. Now, the simulations are quite interesting because what I can do is I can actually go into this simulation and I can change values. So I can change incline. I can change uh, friction. I can change weight and mass. So there's a lot of things I can do. And then it also provides me with some graphs that are built upon the selections that I've made in order so that I can understand it a little bit more. They also come with a worksheet as well. There's, for example, this one here on projection, where we can do, uh, not projection, projectiles. So we can actually have a simulation of, uh, of a projectile. We can go in, this one here is one that I like quite a lot, which is this gravity force. And you can see that what will happen is it'll load up the simulation here. And then what I'll be able to do is go into the objects in this simulation, make modifications to them, and see real-time effects of the decisions that I'm making. So it'll take a few moments to load up, and I'll just give it a refresh because my internet connection might be a little bit slow at the moment. But you can see that if when I go in here, it's going to load up this simulation, and I'm going to be able to make those modifications. So now you can see I've got, for example, the force here. I can go in and make changes to the force. So as I make changes to the one object, right, you can see changes in real time. So let's have a look at this object. And you can see the changes here at the top here. So as I make changes to it, you can see the changes as one object increases. You can see the, uh, the effects of how that uh, affects the formulas and how I'm actually seeing those changes in real time. So it's a very useful resource, something that I think is interesting. But as, a, as I mentioned earlier, let's see what the plans are for InSpirit and what they're looking to do in the future by talking to their CEO. So, hey, welcome. I'm really, really glad that you're here. This is fantastic that you've taken some time out to, to uh, you know, talk to us and let us know a little bit about InSpirit and what it is that you want to do with the company and such. So I guess for my viewers and everyone, maybe introduce yourself. Who are you and, and what's your role at InSpirit? Yeah, absolutely. Thank you for having me here as well, Frank. Uh, my name is Aditya. I am the CEO and co-founder of InSpirit. Um, I um, manage the day-to-day -day operations, I think, through strategy. And my goal is really to build the best product that there can be for science and STEM education. There's a big push towards science and STEM education and the development of the 21st century skills around technical literacy and scientific literacy and all those types of things. What do you really see uh, in spirit doing in terms of supporting uh, that STEM education? What's your big value proposition that you think everybody can benefit from? Yeah, absolutely. I think um, there's two things, there's two ways I want to answer this. One at a very, very fundamental level. Um, 
the the way science should be taught is by experiencing it you should be doing science by actually interacting and engaging with the with the processes of science with simulations with 3d models with interactive elements um that's that's fundamentally what science is it's, it's an experiential subject um unfortunately that's just not how we teach it today a lot of science today is taught um using um tools that may not allow an instructor to um bring that level of student driven interactive um, learning so that's the first thing we're solving within spirit we're giving them a platform that lets them teach with 3d models 3d assets that are dissectable breakable you can run an entire classroom live um, or asynchronously as well um, to um, to bring that interactive collaborative element to science the other thing over here is our platform actually is almost like a toolbox for all your teaching tools. As a teacher, you're probably using um, quizzes to, to evaluate progress um, of your students. You're running multiple quizzes in a class or tests in a class. Um, you're using worksheets and notes. You have study guides, you have slides and PowerPoint presentations. Our goal is to give you this space where you can bring all your tools into this one 3D virtual classroom, what we call a spirit, where you can bring in all your tools and gamify that entire experience by bringing um, that interactive element to it by using and augmenting your content with our 3D library um, and essentially building a digital replica of your physical classroom in the 3D metaverse. Wow, that's fantastic. And do you, do you see that as being something that will uh, sort of take advantage of some of maybe say the VR headsets that we're using, or do you think it'll be mostly computer based? How do you see it playing out in the future? What's sort of the future vision for how it's going to look? Yeah, it's a great question. So as a product, we have built it in such a way that it is hardware agnostic and it will work on virtually any interactive hardware device out there that exists or will exist tomorrow. Um, today, our focus is largely on the browser and making this work for the computer, for tablets, for mobile devices, because um, that's what the average school, the average teacher, the average student has access to anywhere in the world. Um, and so we want to solve immediate problems today. And as time progresses, I think we firmly believe that VR is going to become heavily accessible um, in K-12 classrooms and institutions. And we're going to be ready. We're going to be the platform that will allow you to also um, upskill or upgrade into that technology with the same content, um, but experiencing it in a completely new way. Well, that's great. So it sounds like you're really sort of uh, in the present, but built for the future as well, which I think oh, yeah. is really critical. I mean, that's, absolutely. You know, absolutely. And I, mean, yeah. I love the idea, you know. Yeah. And I think the other thing over here to also add is that the, the average teacher today or, or anybody, I mean, myself too, I can think of myself by placing myself in the shoes of a teacher. Um, I don't really care about virtual reality per se. I care about bringing a very powerful teaching and learning experience for the child, for the learner. And so we want to solve that problem first. Um, the moment we can solve it, um, that allows us to immediately add value and be useful now. And once we do that now, then tomorrow, as tools become affordable, as tools become accessible, um, we can very easily onboard the same users uh, onto these new devices and these new platforms. Yeah, boy, I, you've really spoken to my heart on that one there, because I think it's so important for us to not, you know, this channel is really about how we can use technology to teach and learn better, with the emphasis being on teaching and learning better, not on getting enamored by the technology itself, yeah. obviously yeah. taking advantage of those benefits, but also making sure that we actually have that purpose and that yeah. goal. One of the things I really like about the models that I was able to play with as well was that um, you can actually get a, a huge library of models that I don't know even the most uh, well-funded schools are going to have a hard time affording that many models and do that much destructive experimentation without having to go into some sort of simulation. So that's fantastic. I'm, I'm curious, what, what do you see as being the, uh, the next steps or the future steps? I think you've spoken a little bit about that, but um, what, yeah. what do you think maybe would be uh, the best way for somebody to become involved with using the tools that you've built so far? Yeah, so I think all you got to do is go to www.inspiritvr.com um, and uh, you can jump right in either as an instructor or as a student. Um, you can build your own classroom 
or you can use something that someone else has built. You can remix something that someone else has built, edit it, um, and add your own flavor to it and make it your own. Um, you can take elements of our library, embed a 3D model, embed a simulation, upload your own worksheet, your own study guide, and there you go, that's your classroom. Someone else may wanna um, just bring their own slides, their own uh, tests and quizzes and take some of our 3D assets or something else that another teacher has made. And that's another lesson that you have built right there. So the idea is to build this customizable platform where there is enough out there for you to start using stuff out of the box. It's all standards aligned, curriculum aligned because it's built largely by teachers and students. Um, and uh, and or if you wanna, if you don't find something that that you want, you can create it yourself. Um, just take pieces of the library and make it. And if you really still can't find the building blocks for what you want, reach out to us. Um, just shoot us an email, or there's there's a there's a contact form that's that's hanging over there on our website all the time. And we read all those comments, and we will get back to you with what you need for you to succeed in your teaching. Oh, that's fantastic! It, it sounds like you're even building a community around the modeling as well. So it's uh, that's very interesting. Yep, that's the goal. That's the goal. We want the community to be creating content that works for them. Oh, that's fantastic. Well, you know, thank you so much for meeting with us today. It was great. You know, I have about a hundred more questions I feel I could ask, but I think the best thing for a lot of the viewers to do is maybe check out some of the things that you saw in this video where I demonstrated some of the ways that you can use the tool, as well as check it out for yourself and start participating with each other. I think it'll be really uh, interesting to bring uh, this community into that community as well. And so I really thank you so much for your time. Uh, thank you for taking some time to speak with us. I think you're going to get a lot of people really excited to check it out for sure. My pleasure. Thank you so much as well. Thank you. I thought that was really great. I think it was neat to see a tool and not only see it in action and how we could use it in order to teach and learn better, but I thought it was really neat to see the rationale behind it and what that uh, the people that make that tool, what their thoughts were. If you like this style of video, let me know. I'd love to interview more people that are creating content for us educators and us learners in terms of understanding what they're doing with their products and why they're doing it. So I'm very grateful for InSpirit VR for taking the time to speak with us. If you like content about learning and teaching and how we can use technology to accomplish those goals, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Like this video if it was useful for you. And more importantly, comment down below. What did you like about the, uh, the environment? Are you going to be using InSpirit VR? What do you think you'll use it for? What models do you think will be the most useful for you? I'm pretty excited to see the evolution. Thanks again for watching and we'll see you in the next video.